Hey guys, Erica Sirwin here from Pink Bucker Designs and it's day two of my 12 days of Christmas projects. Today we are doing the Joy To You stamp set. This is a really good basic sentiment stamp set. It's a graphic, um, I guess you call it a graphic image. It's letters basically in words and it can be your focal point. Um, so we're going to make two projects using this one and this one. I have a few uh, swaps to show you at the end, so make sure you hang around, look for to see a few more pieces of inspiration. Um, and I have to say yesterday I shared on my Facebook, in my Facebook group, a video that I found on Instagram of a cake that I actually made for Thanksgiving. It was a Christmas cake, but who cares, right? So it is, it was called a Little Debbie Christmas Cake, cake, I guess. And it was a cake that looks like this. And it was delicious, I must say, we all loved it. It was pretty easy to make too. Um, so of course, today's projects are inspired by that cake that I made that was inspired by this little cake. I've made a box, a new little box for it, and a pretty simple card. Um, for you to go with it. All right, well, let's make the box first since that's the the inspiration piece. And it's a clamshell box. I'm not going to untie it just so that um, the bow stays pretty, but I'll show you how to put it together. All right, you're going to need your Simply Scored and let me get my papers over here, a piece of Poppy Parade that is nine and a fourth by six and a half. I've got some embossing powder on here, it seems like. So nine and a fourth, six and a half. These measurements will be on today's blog post as well. Um, we're gonna score the long side at one and a fourth, four, five and a fourth, and eight. Ooh, I keep jumping the track. It's the second day in a row I've done that. Then we're gonna score it at one and a fourth on the short side and five and a fourth. All right, let's move this out of the way and do I have my bone folder? I do. All right, so this is just a basic shaped box, but I've, I've used the contour scallop dies to create scalloped lids. Um, you know, you can hide a square or rectangle box behind any die cut, and it kind of takes the shape, looks like it's a scalloped box, when really it's just a straight edged box that we've put scalloped die cuts on. So look at your dies and Think about how you can do that as well with other circles, even, um, you know, any, any die you can do that too. All right, so along the long side, I am going to snip the score lines and cut off the corners all the way down. And I made this box um, specifically for the Little Debbie Cake, but that doesn't mean you have to use the Little Debbie Cake. You can use, you can put anything in there you want. Maybe you've made your own treats. Maybe you've bought a gift card and a pair of socks. Who knows? Whatever you want to put in here. It's a it's a good size box. Um, as far as the Little Debbie Christmas cakes, uh, these are, I think, if you have a store that has Little Debbies, they're going to have these. This is probably the most common Christmas Little Debbie uh, cake that they make. But... Um, I'm going to link today on today's blog post the Little Debbie Cake Finder. And the Little Debbie Cake Finder is on the Little Debbie website. If I can get all these picked up, goodness. And um, you enter your zip code, and then there's a drop-down menu, and you pick whichever treat you're looking for, and it will tell you what stores in your area have it. That way you don't have to go around a bunch of stores looking for it. All right, so first thing we're going to do, these four tabs right here we're going to put glue on the outside and glue them right here into the side all right so put glue on the outside and then fold it up and i have a bucket of clothes pens that i keep here to hold my boxes closed i live in a pretty humid climate so the liquid glue that i'm using is my preference it really does work better than anything else in my humid climate. So um, depending on where you live and depending on your preference, you can use tear and tape, uh, stamp and seal plus, whatever you want. All right, now for these, so that's the bottom. This is going to be the lid that folds down over the bottom. We're going to do the same thing with the remaining two tabs. 
All right, and we're just gonna fold those. You wanna make sure that your edges are um, flush, they're square, okay? There we go. And we're just gonna leave that to dry for a few minutes, okay? And we're gonna do our stamping. Now, the Little Debbie's cake has these swirl lines. Well, I can show you, it has these swirl lines. And so on my cake that I made, I just took my icing and did that. But I found that if I did that with my marker on here, eh, it didn't look so good. So I thought, you know, let's just do some lines. And what better way to make some lines than using the sketched plaid background stamp. So that's what we're gonna do. I've got my piece of basic white. Again, the measurements for these pieces will be over on my blog today. Um, I'm using my Stamparatus to make sure I get it in the right place. And I put just a little bit of adhesive there because when you lay your stamp down, when it, it is inked, a lot of times it'll pull that paper up. And just in case I wanna lay it back down, if I need to push it back down, the paper will stay where, where it's supposed to. All right, so Poppy Parade ink is what we're using. If you don't have a Stamparatus, you can use your largest block. It'll work. Also, on a smaller piece, you can even leave your um, you can even leave your stamp in the case and lay the paper down on it. You're gonna get your fingers messy, and it's not the best way, but it does work. All right, so there we've got our little our little plaid piece, and then we're gonna do on the cake. Let's look. There's some green sprinkles on there. So on my big cake, I took um, green sugar and sprinkled it all over the cake. But for this little piece, we're going to use a dark granny apple green stamp and blend. All right, we're just gonna sprinkle some sugar on there like that. All right, now we have a piece of basic white, if I can get it picked up. And this is where we're gonna use our Joy To You stamp. Um, it's just basic block lettering. Now I'm gonna stamp it in Poppy Parade, but if you wanna stamp this in more than one color, you can get your Stampin' Right markers and color right on your stamp um, with different colors. You could color each of the words a different color if you wanted to, um, but I'm just gonna keep it simple and stamp it right there. Now I have also brought out my Happy Labels Pick a Punch, and we're gonna stick this in here and punch. Stick this one in here and punch like that, okay? Isn't that cute? It looks like a little ticket. And then we've got our, the other pieces that we need. Why can't, my, my fingers aren't working today. We've got a Granny Apple Green Christmas tree. This was cut with a Marius Trees dies. Why don't we go ahead and put that on here with some dimensionals. And do I have dimensionals? I do. I was worried they were, they were gone. I have been crafting up a storm lately in here, getting ready for 12 days of Christmas projects. So who knows? where my adhesives are at any given moment. Let's go up a little bit higher, just a little bit. Okay, and then we'll put this across the tree also with dimensionals like that. All right, and then I'm gonna use my pearls, festive pearls. Now, if you watched yesterday's 12 days projects, I had these on the snowflake box and I completely forgot to put them on there, <laughs> of course. So if you were wondering yesterday where the, the, little, um, the little silver pearls that were on the box came from, they are from the same pack, the festive pearls. It's funny when you're making a video how you can just completely leave something off. All right, one more. We're doing gold on this tree, okay? All right, now let's see. Let's go ahead and put this on here. Right there, it fits right perfectly. It covers up the stitches, but that's okay. We didn't necessarily need the stitches. All right, for the box now, it should be totally dry. I'm gonna put our little Debbie cake in there. Get it straight in the 
package. Little Debbie snacks are one of my favorite treats to give because they are inexpensive. Uh, a box is just a few dollars and there's usually six in, the, in a box, which is really nice. All right, I've got my woo ribbon right here. This is just, it's called Basic White Herringbone Ribbon. It's a nice wide ribbon. So I'm gonna wrap it around the box before I put on the top and the bottom. Okay. This ribbon also is really good for stamping. If you like to stamp on ribbon, this ribbon is perfect for that. You can stamp words on your ribbons. You can stamp images. You know, you could put polka dots, whatever you want. If you want to, if you want to dress up your ribbon, this ribbon is the perfect ribbon to do that with. You can also color it with Stampin' Blends, which we did. Didn't we do that yesterday in our in our project? Maybe, I can't remember. I've made so many projects lately, I can't remember. No, it wasn't yesterday. It's for a project, oh, it's for the calendar class. All right, so there's your box. It's cute like that, isn't it? But we're not gonna leave it like that. We've got one for the bottom, and I'm just gonna sit the box right down in that, and I'm gonna look and make sure that I've got it in the scallops, okay? So look at the four corners when you stick this down and just try to get it as even as you can and then press down, okay? And then, well, let's use liquid glue up here on the top. We'll just put some liquid glue like this and stick that right on top. It's a little bit easier on the top to get that on there. And, Voila, there is your little Debbie box. This is a easily reproduced box. If you need to make 10 of them, it's not gonna take you too long. There's not a lot of fussy, tedious work. And it's super cute. Wouldn't that be cute, a, a party favor or something? I don't know, I just really think it's cute. And I love that it resembles the cake inside. Okay, now let's make the matching card. I love this paper. This is the Mary Bold and Bright Designer Series paper. Hopefully it's not sold out by the time this video goes live. Um, I know it was on low inventory at one point and I just love it. Um, it is the paper that has the lights that goes at the very front of our mini catalog has the um, st string of lights projects, which I have a day coming up next week that will feature that stamp set. But I love the um, Melon Mambo and Poppy Parade together. I think that's a very unique color combination. It's bright and bold. And so I decided to use it. I've also cut a silver, I mean, a, not silver, a Granny Apple Green Foil Star. That's fun. This package has uh, Melon Mambo and Granny Apple Green. I didn't know I needed foil in those colors, but now that I have them, I'm like, oh my gosh, I need foil in all the bright colors. Really fun. Um, but first, let's emboss. We're gonna use this embossing folder. I just had it in my hands right here. Um, the Basics Embossing Folder. And I am gonna line that up. I um, told you guys yesterday, there's a line on most of our embossing folders that helps you line up your cardstock so that when you run it through, it will be straight. All right, so again, plate one and plate four, you take all the other ones out and you run that through. And um, when your paper comes out, you have one side that is popped up, that's the embossed side, and then you have the back side that is debossed. Actually, that's the debossed side. See how the stars are sticking out? That's the embossed raised side. This is the deboss side where the stars are sticking down. And sometimes I like to use the debossed side better than the embossed side. So I think we're gonna do that this time. I think we're gonna use the flat side. So I've just got a basic white, thick basic white card base. I'm gonna stick down, this is Melon Mambo. Stick that down. And then we've just got a piece of, um, let's do the DSP first. That stripes DSP, and if you wanted to change that to that pattern, hmm, do I wanna do that? I don't know, I like that. No, I'm gonna stick with the stripes. I really like the stripes. You decide any of the papers in that pack will match with this color combination. All right, and then we've got just a piece of Real, or a Poppy Parade cardstock. It's just a little bit bigger. Okay. 
Now let's, let's stamp our greeting in Melon Mambo. And, you know, I did something a little daring here. I've stamped, I've just, I have not given myself a huge sheet of cardstock. Hopefully I can get it straight. We're gonna use the trimmer and we're gonna cut it out. But, you know, give yourself some extra room in case you're crooked that way you still have um, enough white to cut it out straight if that makes sense. All right, uh, Melon Mambo Inc. Sid sending good tidings in this season of cheer. When you have big, bold words, you don't have to add a lot more to your card. You can kind of use your paper and embellishments as, you know, the stars along with just the sentiment as the focal point. Sometimes, I add a focal point, maybe an image, a stamped image, and then I don't have room for the sentiment. And I'm like, oh, now what? Where do I put it? So it's fun when the sentiment is the focal point. So really, you just need to add paper and embellishments. Okay, so just cut it down to the size of the words. And grab your dimensionals. And we'll put that right there. Let's put it down a little bit lower than center. All right, now grab your Lemon Lime Twist ribbon. And I'm gonna just make a figure eight with my ribbon. I'm not actually going to tie a bow. This is kind of like a fake bow. Okay, and then do I have my... Well, I do not. I was hoping I had my foam adhesive sheets here so I could cut a big piece, a big foam uh, adhesive dot, but we'll just use regular dimensionals. All right, so place it there and then stick it down with dimensionals or if you have your big foam adhesive sheet, use that to hold it down. You can cut a bigger, just like a big square. All right, and then all we're gonna do is take that silver foil star and let's make sure we cover up. Look, now we've got them stuck there. Stuck, stick down like that. All right, hmm, do we need a little more adhesive? Let's add a little more. Sometimes that ribbon covers up that entire adhesive. So let's just add another one like you know what, I feel like I wanna make this a little bit smaller on this end. Is it too late, guys, do you think? Nope, I think I can do it. There we go. All right, now let's stick it down. Third time's a charm. There we go, and then we'll just, mm, I don't know, do we even need to trim these? I don't know, I don't think so. This one just doesn't wanna stick down, does it? All right, come on, guy, you've got, a, you've got a dimensional. There we go. All right, last but not least, Let's add a sprinkling of pearls. Now these pearls are Parakeet Party. They're not exactly the same green, but this is Granny Apple, this is Lemon Lime Twist, and these are uh, Parakeet Party, and I think they go pretty well together. They don't have to be exactly matchy-matchy. All right, there you go. A really simple card that can go with your Little Debbie cake box. All right, I have a few bonus projects to show you using the joy to You stamp set. Um, these are swaps. This one also has that, that um, granny apple green foil on the uh, backside, it's so beautiful. And this was made by my downline, Anne Marie. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? She used two different stamps in that. And there's that uh, Mary Bold and Bright Designer Series paper too. This one is uh, from another one of my downline, Heather. And she made a little quilt here with the Joy of Christmas Designer Series paper. She stamped that on one of our fancy labels. And then last but not least, this is a swap card I got from Rachel. Again, look, she's got that, that green foil there. And she stamped hers on a um, nested essential square. And um, she use different colors for her words. So, a couple more ideas for you, there you go. And here are today's projects. Remember to check my blog for the measurements and the supplies, and I will have a PDF for you at the end of the 12 days that will have all 24 projects with written instructions, measurements, and supplies. All right, everybody, I'll see you tomorrow for Sending Cheer. We'll be live on Facebook tomorrow at two o'clock.
Bye.